Today on the Canadian Arcade, we're going to take a look at the Mike's Arcade Reproduction Nintendo Buttons. For some time, Nintendo collectors have been in need of a quality reproduction of the Nintendo button. Nintendo buttons are slightly different in size and feel from your standard arcade variety. Up until recently, the best thing available on the market were these ones shown here on the left. As you can see, they don't really compare to this original Nintendo button on the right. For starters, the old reproduction buttons don't have an e-clip. The colors are way off from some of the earlier games. The thread length is way too short comparatively. The tops of the buttons don't have that aggressive curve to them. The spring is much weaker. And for you purists out there, they don't produce that same click sound because they're not made from the same nylon as original buttons. At best, they kept you from modifying your control panel and avoided the high price tag some people were selling original buttons for. However, with the introduction of Mike's new reproduction buttons, all this has changed. Like the original, the new buttons have e-clips, the thread length is the correct size, the button top has that aggressive shape, the spring tension is as close to the original as you're ever going to feel, and they have that same distinctive sound. They can also be modified so the plunger sits higher, like those buttons found on earlier Nintendo games such as Donkey Kong and Popeye. You do this by simply shaving down some of the button housing and threads that the E-clip rests on. As for color, here you can see the full range of both the new repros and an original Nintendo button sitting behind it. Most of the colors are spot on. The one notable standout is the purple button used on the red tent. I have a few original purple buttons, and even their color varies greatly from each other. Mike has mentioned to us that he may actually tweak these colors a little bit over time. As for installation, on classic Nintendo cabinets, it's pretty simple. First, open your coin door, reach inside to unclip both sides of the control panel, pull out and raise the control panel up, disconnect the wiring harness, and remove it from the cabinet. Place the control panel on a sturdy surface. Using a wrench, untighten the old PAL nut holding the button in place. Unscrew the PAL nut and pull the old button away. Insert the new button and thread back on the PAL nut. Then tighten it up with the wrench. Make sure you don't over tighten these as you could end up breaking them by accident. Once the button is in place, adjust the height of the micro switch shown here in the manual. If you're replacing original Nintendo buttons, you probably won't need to do this but now's a good time to make them feel perfect again. Repeat the same steps with the other buttons on the panel, and when you're ready, it's time to put it back on the game. Reinstall the panel back into the cabinet in the opposite order that you removed it originally. Turn the game back on and check your work. Well, that's our look at the Mike's Arcade reproduction buttons. I'd like to thank Mike from Mike'sArcade.com for helping us out with this video. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments section. If you like what we're doing here on the Canadian Arcade, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching. Ah, no matter how good these buttons are, I still kind of suck at this game.